Hello folks and welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1067 so out of curiosity coming out of the previous chapter which I thought was personally one of the best chapters of the year with a huge amount of sell and build up when it comes to Robin and possibly the future of what the next arc in One Piece we'll have to wait and see where Oda goes with that but I was real curious about this chapter how that will fold suit gave us just as much hype by the end let's start off with the cover page and obviously and in my opinion, this cover story should be wrapped up within the next two chapters because we got Caesar Clown and Judge finally reuniting. Although I think Judge doesn't recognize Caesar from the days of Mad, so plot, they've done that plot point. So what else is there to draw out at this point? As much, listen, I like Rage as much as the next person, but I think it's time to move on before this cover story really drags on. So we start off with Jory Barney, who's asking, "What the hell happened to you?" Head Vegapunk because it was like a large light bulb the last time I saw you, which we saw in the flashback, it was huge. He was met, met up with Dragon, so we find out two things about Vegapunk. Number one, he cut his head. We also find out he's a devil fruit user too, because he ate the brain brain fruit, so go figure. So he he has that's how he's able to store unlimited amount of data in his in his brain and memorize a lot of things that could be problematic for the world government. And apparently his brain continues to grow. And the chopper is enthralled by this because it could lead into med medical knowledge for chopper, so that's why he's curious about this. So that's cool. But Luffy's kind of pop poking holes at Mega Punk, say, "Oh, you're stupid because you cut your head." So the apple, so the apples on, on his head is an, an antenna transmits to the top of the egg head because he literally says, "Look at the top of the island on the back side of the giant egg. There's a punk records written." On it that's the hanger for my brain so that's what connects it so there you go and we also find out about the Vegapunk 6 now this was pretty much obvious like the six individual clones of Vegapunk with different personalities if you mash it up into one you get the actual Vegapunk so there you go I pretty much pointed that out that they had different personalities for a reason obviously this goes right by Luffy's head but you're basically like oh it's because they share the same brain what a comprehensible world but this is Vegapunk's dream. Someday his brain will share with the rest of the world, share with all of mankind. So he wants to share his brain with the Western world or his knowledge to the rest of the world. And Jimmy kind of points out, will there be any problems since you try to connect to my brain in the future? And Vegapunk's like, kind of like, yeah, you're a sharp one, but that, that's not going to be a problem because that's not what science does. This is what ticks Bonnie up because it's like, you never, you never change. So she brings out the lightsaber sword and she, this is all about wanting to restore kuma back to the way it was her father back to the way he was because he modified kuma so and vegapunk's like oh stop that sit that, that beam saber is just a uh, failed product and bonnie doesn't care she's like yeah shut up I just, I just want my father back to normal if you answer no and J jimbe's like trying to calm it down like, yo don't kill him that could cause a lot of problems for you and then we find out that beam is nothing more than a tra an attraction device for a mass amount of bugs which we find out another tidbit about jewelry bar we did not know about she apparently is terrified of bugs which i'm i'm pretty sure isn't that the same as what nami and sanji have because we saw that on skype here so so she ends up passing out because of that so that's something we did not know about jory barney because again i just want to point out as much as last chapter is about the robin build up with a character going forward this arc has been about getting us more insight into jory barney who she is as a person so i'm glad Oda went back to that because that because because we need more information about barney and kuma so even if it's tidbits like this. But then Vegapunk kind of has the guilty tr guilt trip here because he realizes, yeah, he messed up with Kuma. It makes sense why she wants to kill me. But then he asked Luffy about, is it true there's another dragon besides Kaido on Wano since you were there? And Luffy responds, yep, you're talking about Momo. Vegapunk says that's a, that was a fr failed devil fruit that I left on Punk Hazard. And Luffy kind of hypes it up by saying, no, no, it wasn't failed because it was kind of cool. It helped us out, so... And the moment Luffy mentioned it was pink, Vegapunk goes into a complete, into a complete withdrawal because he's like, you, you see it was a failure because it was pink, but Ve uh, Luffy says, like, it, it still worked. And Jimmy's like, yo, he's a perfectionist and a genius. So that goes back to what I said about the uh, first of the Vegapunk six we got introduced to, Lil. She had the same personality, same quirks. Like she, 
she's more of a perfectionist more than anything else because she realizes she, she's not perfect I, I pointed that out because that was there for a reason so. then we get the lore about the mystical robotic giants which i didn't think i actually thought it exploded in the previous chapter so, sorry if i missed that but it seemed like it exploded in the previous chapter so to see that this legendary metal giant is still intact even after that so that's pretty cool this gives this chapter gives us more lore into this what it was why it's here when it existed so 200 years ago it actually stormed mera jose it attacked mera jose but because it ran out of power it couldn't complete his attack so obviously they were spared to me, this is obvious for a shadow. Tap Mary Jo say 200 years ago, but it was created probably 900 years ago. So again, back to that 900. So that's obviously when the Void Century took place to me, but we need more in insight into that. We need more, more info about that. So, so, but nobody knows where it actually came from or what it was trying to do. The world government ordered its complete destruction, but because of its curiosity of, curiosity of researchers, that did, didn't do that. And it went it went completely hidden under the world government which is kind of a problem unless they find a way to unless they find a way to boot up that robot right now we know cyberpole uh, literally on on the doorstep of egghead highland by the end of this chapter so if they run into that you know they're going to try and destroy it it has it has to be whoever was against umasama back during the void century Th that's the only thing i could come to think about when it comes to like why it was ordered to do st storm Mera Jose. And we also get the other Straw Hats, obviously Robin, Nami, Sanji, Usopp, and Frankie, which is pretty cool because they're actually seeing Luffy's okay. And Robin points this out 200 years ago is when the discrimination against the fishermen started. So that I kind of like the consistency there. So that's pretty cool. Then it's pretty much stated like, yo, that robot climbed through the red line. And then the Vegapunk Shaka pretty much responds, probably. We created Vega Force based on everything we learned from it. Then we get a kind of one-hearted moment here because we have Nami, Usopp, and Sanji. Nami's like seeing Luffy and the others are okay, so she's glad about that. Then she kind of asks who's that girl with them. And then Usopp, I think it's either Usopp or somebody else that points, it could be Robin, it's Jewelry Barney, she's a pirate just like us. I like to think it was Usopp just to give him something just to give him some credibility. And Sanji's like, so that girl's got some trouble. So she's obviously passed out. And then Vegapunk kind of brings up something, which I think is going to be foreshadowed as well, because Vegapunk's like, Bonnie, I did some bad things to Bonnie. And I, I like this moment from Luffy because it's like, it's, it goes back to what I said, the interaction between Luffy and Bonnie are there. With each time it's, it's, it's whether it's very minuscule or very noticeable, you see it. Luffy says, oh yeah, you should beg for, for forgiveness because that was totally messed up what you did but Vegapunk kind of like you don't know anything about it so shut your mouth but this is where I think Forsha is going to come into play and Barney's going to be a key factor here because she said he Vegapunk says he says I, there are some things I wish I handed it over to her what is was he talking about and Vegapunk turns the focus to Luffy says it's fate that you've come here so then we get Vegapunk saying could you take me out of Egghead Highland so he wants to leave so to me this is Luffy's not after hearing that. I don't know if Luffy's gonna just blow that off. We find out Cypher Paul on literally on the doorstep where the hype building, because this is where Barney comes into play. Because it's like we got information that Jory Barney is is heading to Ed Hay Highland, not knowing she's already there. That's number one. Number two, she's an eye, so Lord Lucci says she's an eye saw who repeatedly escaped. We no longer have any use for her, right? Next time we meet, I'll definitely kill her. And I'm like, wait, next time. So did Lucci and Bonnie have a flight pr prior to this? Because when the hell did they meet? We need that clarified. So that, I thought that was kind of interesting. And this is where, this is kind of cool because it's like Shaka's like, just being communicated like, oh, we got, we got company. It's a government ship. It'd be bad if they knew we harbor pirates here. Also the CP0 and Lucci on that ship. And then this is where the street straw hats freak out. Sanji says, I'm going to protect you, Robins. So don't worry about it. I would like to see a Sanji versus Luigi fight, but I don't think from a character standpoint, I don't think it calls for that based on what we had in the previous chapter. So then Shaka's like, prepare to intercept, them. decline their request to harbor. I doubt they're going to like this, but we're not going to let them prepare for battle. So pretty much they're ready for this. I like this because the straw hats aren't going to be blindsided here. Like they didn't, 
they didn't know CP0 on Wano. Now they know they're coming to Egghead Island. So that kind of changes things a little bit. That would have been the end of the chapter. That would have been fine. But then we go to the hype building part of the chapter for me, and that's the Kama, we go to Kamamaka Kingdom, where we see Dragon and Kuma is like, he's about ready to do a sprinted marathon or something because he just darts off out of nowhere. That they're asking something strange is happening with Kuma. Kuma stands up and they're just start darting off. And that's how the chapter ends. And I like it how it's Dragon and even Cough. They're trying to reason with Kuma because they're the ones that initially started the Revolutionary Army. So, but I think it's pretty obvious where Kuma is heading. Whatever memory he has is of Barney. So that's where he's heading right now. Again, my question is, will he make that make it there in time? And if he does, that potentially gives us a huge opportunity for get some development for Kuma, even if he's less than conscious state. But he, he we know he. There's no reason for him to, to dart off now if he's not going to Egghead Island. So that's, that could be kind of, kind of cool. It's also going to be cool for Barney's character because, like I said, a majority of this arc has been focused on Kuma as much as it's been on Vegapunk. And last chapter, it was focused on Robin. My question is, is Kuma going to sacrifice himself? Because I don't, in this state, I don't see him being able to take, up, take down CP0. I don't. Unless he does something miraculous to repair himself. But... The only other thing I can see is it could be where Oda's going with this. The rest of the Revolutionary Army is going to go to back him up. And they'll show up by the end. Because I don't see I don't see them letting Kuma go off on his own. Yeah, this has to be going this has to be Kuma do thinking about thinking about Barney. I think Kuma must know where Barney is out, otherwise he wouldn't go there. And isn't it convenient that Barney is a target of CP0? Lucci threatened to kill her. All of a sudden why? Because, I, like I said, she knows what happened on Reverie and she's going to spill the beans by the end to the straw house. That's one reason why she's here. Because Vivi can't do it right now. We don't know where Vivi is at without spoiling it of what, what's happened to her. You can't have, we, we can't have Sabo because we don't know where, if he's alive right now. And that would spoil that. So technically Barney's the only one that falls in line to actually give them the, the update especially now and the other thing too is the fact that they threatened to kill Barney and the the next very the next scene is all about Kuma going off somewhere but I think it's pretty obvious he's headed to Egghead Highland we'll have to wait and see where that goes like I said it could lead to Dragon showing up and given the, what we saw in the previous chapter with Vegapunk and Dragon knowing one another I think I think it's pretty much a given Obviously, the fact that Vegapunk asked Luffy to take him away from Egghead Highland, I I said that Straw Hats were going to be somewhat of a protection, to, a, a shield to Vegapunk in no uncertain terms. Now, because of CP0 showing up, I don't see Luffy and I don't see Robin, especially with what we learned last chapter that Professor Clover was associated with Vegapunk and Dragon. I don't see Robin and the rest of the Straw Hats letting Vegapunk die question I have is which who's going to confront Cypher Paul first is it going to be Zoro and Brooke or is it going to be the group with Sanji, Robin, Usopp, Frankie, Nanami or is it going to be Luffy, Barney now that Barney's been threatened because that that, that that changes things a lot previously I was kind of like uh, I'm not too sure about this are we going to really have a Luchi versus Luffy rematch it'd be cool but we know the outcome because there's no way Luchi is stronger than Kaido, unless he's bulked up, unless he's been given an upgrade that that lets him surpass a Yonko, I don't see that. So that's why I was kind of iffy. I'd be okay with Luffy only if it's to like bridge the alliance because it gives Luffy and Barney now a reason to fight alongside one another. Because they're both going to be targeted, their crew mates are going to be targeted. Barney is now being hunted, it's like they're not aware that Barney is there at the moment so and like I said, if Zoro goes up against Luchi, it's the same thing as Zoro, Luffy going up against Luchi. I don't see Luchi beating Zoro. Well, I don't. It could be more of a fight if they all team up against Zoro. That'd be interesting. Again, there's a reason why Zoro and Brook are not there. I think it's for plot reasons more than anything else. There's a reason why the crew separated again. We'll have to wait and see what that is. Like I said, a prime candidate to go up against CP0 is definitely Robin. No questions asked. Question I was, who does she go up against? Do she or Lucha? I don't really care. It, given what we saw in the last chapter, it's kind of warranted. I'd be kind of, I'd be okay if Luffy gets involved only if he's like fighting alongside Barney. 
other than that, I don't think I don't think it's necessary. But we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, the ending of this chapter kind of makes me think, what the hell has Oda got planned? Because obviously Kuma's going to show up. He may end up in the pacifista Zephyrium, Lunarian version of himself, and then again sacrificing himself because I don't see him winning because he's not in the right state. Like I said, unless he gets repaired. He may end up sacrificing himself not only for only for his daughter, but also for the Straw Hats. He already did that pre-time skip. He sacrificed himself to protect the Sunny. He sacrificed himself to, to separate the Straw Hats so they won't get taken down by Kizaru. This could be very interesting whether or not Dragon shows up by the end of this. Like he pulls a Shanks and we see Dragon instead of Shanks show up at her Highland to protect not only Vegapunk, but Robin and Luffy as well. Personally, I would like to think that the Strahds would be able to defeat CP0 before Dragon shows up. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this could be interesting for Barney's character and Kuma, if nothing else. So I can't wait to see where that goes. That's going to do it for you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you did. appreciate that. I appreciate all the support. Subscribe channel for more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.